Hi, welcome. I have some very important questions for you today. Did you know that the Prophet of Islam, i.e. Muhammad, ordered his followers, the Muslims, to fight and conquer every country on this planet? No? You didn't know that? You never heard this before? What? Really? Did you know what will happen if Islam one day invade your country here in the West and implement Sharia law? Yes, you heard it correctly. The same country that your grand grandfathers defended with their blood, sweat and tears. Yes, that same country that you now and your children peacefully live in. But will there still be any freedom, democracy, right or any future for you and your children and your loved ones as non-Muslims under Sharia law? Do you think there will be freedom of speech for you as a Kafir, i.e. as an unbeliever? Are you going to be a third class citizen and called a dhimmi? Did you know that you are forced to pay jizya as a Christian? which is nothing but a mafia protection money forced to pay as penalty or fine for being a non-Muslim, a kafir. Did you know what will be done to you as a dhimmi if you refuse to pay jizya? If you refuse to pay jizya, Muslims will ask you to leave the country. If you refuse to leave your own country, they are allowed to kill you they will take your women, your mothers, your daughters and wives as sex slaves. Did you know that? Did you know that Muslims for sure will implement the Pact of Omar? If you never heard of the Pact of Omar before, then it's a must for any non-Muslim to continue watching this very important video. So let us together investigate what the real Pact of Omar is and what the consequences will be for any non-Muslim, like a Christian, a Kafir, in an invaded country by Muslims who implemented Sharia law. What are the consequences going to be for you as a Dhimmi, as a Christian, under the rule of Muslims? Let us see what the Pact of Omar says. Now, if you're going to read the Pact of Omar, you will understand why you should at all times defend your country to the last breath. Because when you're going to agree on the Pact of Omar, that means you're going to be nothing but an animal under Muslim rule as a dhimmi. You will have no rights to actually practice your religion freely. You will see why you should defend your country from any Muslim invasion. Let us go and read the Pact of Omar. The Pact of Omar says basically, do not initiate the Salam to the Jews and the Christians. So do not greet the Jews and the Christians first. Let them greet you. And if you meet any of them in a road, force them to its narrowest alley. So basically to the sewage. A Muslim must force you to the dirt, which is on the right or left side, basically. This is why the leader of the faithful, Omar bin al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, demanded his well-known conditions be met by the Christians. These conditions that ensured their continued humiliation, degradation and disgrace. How beautiful it's going to be when a Muslim conquers your land and put these things on you as a Christian. Right Christians, will you accept this or are you going to defend your country to the last breath? The scholars of Hadith narrated from Abdul Rahman bin Ghanam al-Ashiri that he said, I recorded for Umar bin al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, the terms of the treaty of peace, what peace, <laughs> we'll see what peace, he conducted with the Christians of Asham, which is Damascus, the Christians of Damascus.
In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, as if a real Christian would ever such sign such a document. Never. We will never sign a document where which starts with Allah. Because if we're going to sign a document which starts with the name of Allah, that means we are agreeing that Allah is God. And we will never agree that Allah is God. And we will never ever sign a document where it says in the name of Allah. That means we are rejecting our Lord and Savior as Jesus Christ. A true Christian will never ever sign such a document. So if we continue, it says, this is a document to the servant of Allah, Omar, the leader of the faithful, from the Christians of such and such city. When you Muslims come to us, we requested safety for ourselves, our children, and property and followers of our religion, as if we would ever sign such conditions on ourselves. Safety from who? From Muslim hands, of course. Right, Muslims? Because if we're not going to pay jizya to you, you will not guarantee us any safety anymore. You will kill us, take our women, our daughters as sex slaves. Right, Muslims? We made a condition on ourselves that we will neither erect in our areas a monastery. So we will not build any monastery or churches or a sanctuary for a monk nor restore any place of worship that needs restor restoration. So we will not even restore a broken church or that needs fixing, nor use any of them for the purpose of enmity against Muslims. We will not prevent any Muslim from resting in our churches. So if a Muslim comes by and he needs to rest, we must open our churches for the Muslims, whether they come by day or night and we will open the doors of our houses of worship for the wayfarer and passerby. So we are forced to open our churches as ho hotels for the Muslims. Right. Those Muslims who come as guests will enjoy boarding and food for day three days. So you are forced to give Muslims food for three days. We will not allow a spy against Muslims in our churches and homes or hide the seed of betrayal against Muslims. We will not teach our children the Quran. So we are not even allowed as Christians to teach the nasty teaching of Islam and the Quran or publicize practices of shirk. So we are not even allowed to practice Christianity because Christianity is considered to be shirk associating partners with Allah if we worship Jesus. So how can we practice Christianity, practice our faith, if we are not allowed to associate Christ as Lord and Savior, as our Lord and Savior, together with Allah? Do you see how free you are to practice your religion as a Christian? <laughs> what a joke. What a joke this pact of Omar is. As if any Christian would ever sign such a document. Or prevent any of our fellows from embracing Islam if they choose to do so. We will respect Muslims. My friend, respect must be earned. You Muslims do not deserve our respect if you ask us to sign such a document, i.e. the Pact of Omar. Move from the places we sit in, if they choose to sit in them. So if a Muslim tells you to stand up from the place where you are sitting, you must stand up immediately and allow the Muslims to sit. So if a Muslim tell you to jump as a Christian, then me, you must say how high. We will not imitate their clothing, caps, turbans, sandals, hairstyles, speech, nicknames, and the title names, or ride on saddles, hang swords on the shoulders, collect weapons of any kind, or carry these weapons. So as a Christian, you cannot have a hostile speech, 
or any weapon, carry any weapon to defend yourself as a Christian under Muslim rule as a dhimmi. <laughs> what a joke. We will not encrypt our stamps in Arabic or sell liquor. So you're not even allowed to sell alcoholic drinks as a Christian dhimmi. We will have the front of our hair cut. So you must cut your hair on the front as a Christian dhimmi. Wear our customary clothes. So we must wear customary clothes wherever we are. Wear belts around our waist. Hmm, now I understand. Uh -huh. Where the Nazis got the idea for the yellow David star from? From the Muslims who forced Christian dhimmis to wear belts around their waist. As if we're going to do that. Refrain from erecting crosses on the outside of our churches. So we're not even allowed to put a cross on top of our churches and demonstrating them and our books in public in Muslim fairways and markets. So we are not even allowed to carry our Holy Bible with us when we go to Muslim fairways and markets. We will not sound the bells in our churches except discreetly, very quietly or raise our voices while reciting our holy books inside our churches in the presence of Muslims. So if there are Muslims in our churches, we must whisper our prayers like this. No raise our voices with prayer at our funerals or light torches in funeral processions in fairways of Muslims or their markets. Always keep whispering. Don't raise your voice as a Christian dimni. We will not bury our dead next to a Muslim dead or by servants who were captured by Muslims. We will be guides for Muslims and refrain from breaching their privacy in their homes. When I give this document to Omar, he added, so, Muhab so sorry, Omar added even more stuff to this document as if this document is not already nasty enough. So Omar added the following. We will not beat any Muslim. So if you, as a Christian dhimmi, beat any Muslim, there are going to be very harsh consequences for you. These are the conditions that we sent against ourselves. Who? The Christians. As if any Christian would accept such conditions. <laughs> what a joke. And followers of our religion in return for safety and protection Safety and protection from who? From Muslims, right? What kind of protection is this? If we break any of these promises that we set for your benefit, the benefit of Muslims, against ourselves, i.e. the Christian dhimmis, then our dhimma, promise of protection, is broken and you're allowed to do with us what you're allowed of people of devi deviance and rebellion. So basically, if you don't accept these conditions, i.e. the Pact of Omar, they are allowed to do what they want to do with you. They will kill you and they will take your women, your daughters, your wives and mothers as sex slaves. What a lovely and peaceful religion Islam is towards Christians. Don't Muslims always say, La ikra din. There is no compulsion in religion. Ah, it seems that that ayah, chapter two, ayah two hundred and fifty-six, is abrogated. After all, what tolerance, what peace, what rights do Christians have under Muslim rule? So Christians, wake up. Never, ever, ever allow any Muslim force or army invade your Western country. Because when they are going to invade your country and conquer your country, that means you're going to become an animal. An animal. You are not even a human anymore. You will have no rights. No safety, nothing. Because if you decide someday to break those conditions, 
they are going to kill you and they are sure going to take your women as their personal sex slaves guys this is a very important video download it and share it everywhere on social media and let everybody know about the true face of Islam the so-called peace religion the peaceful religion that they call Islam surely Islam is nothing but a mafia cult thank you for watching and God bless